You ever known those couples that are the husband, the wife, and his mom? Or the husband, the wife, and her dad? That always works out. Uh, hmm. Let's get into that. Hey everybody, I'm Nathan. I'm Andrea. And you're reaching us for Marriage Monday on the Marriage by Design podcast. Marriage Monday is a show that we do every Monday where we talk about what the Bible says about God's design for marriage, as well as some practical pointers for us as married couples that we can better live out that plan in our marriages. Yeah. And this is a new month, so we have a new topic. Hello. And we are talking about family relationships and how to navigate the holidays since that's something that's coming up soon and just some just how family can affect our our marriages and it's amazing to me how many people some pretty solid people just dread coming into november and december mm -hmm. because they are going to be spending you know more time than usual around in-laws and mm -hmm. parents and extended family. So we're right. going to talk about that. <clears throat> yes. So we're going to talk about this week. Um, we're going to talk about our relationship with our parents. And I don't mean our Nathan and Andrea. I mean your personal relationship with your parents. Yeah. How that can affect your marriage, the good, the bad, That's the right. ugly, all that sort of thing. That's right. Then next week we're going to talk about your relationship with your, your in-laws. <laughs> <laughs> and how that can impact funny, your funny. relationship. Funny, funny. Slip up there. That's right. Um, by the way, I love my in-laws. Me too. Then <clears throat> on the third week, we're going to talk about holidays specifically. How do you navigate that? We're going to talk, that's going to kind of be a little bit of a bleed over from Marriage Monday to Family Friday issues because <clears throat> oftentimes holidays take a toll on marriage because yeah. they involve so much family, your own right. personal family, your, you and your spouse and your children. Right. Then the fourth week, which I'm super excited about, are to talk about a few specific difficult cases when it comes to family. So maybe you have a family member that deals with addiction. How do you handle that? Maybe you have a family member that <clears throat> wants to tell you all about how wrong you are in your political beliefs or your religious beliefs. Or, or how you're raising your kids or whatever. Exactly. Um, so how do we deal with that? So right. we're going to talk about that in the fourth week. <clears throat> also, I just wanted to plug right at the beginning, the last Thursday this month, we're going to be making an announcement about kind of where our show's going from here. Um, so we had an opportunity to meet with someone. We'll talk more about that on Thursday. And he gave some amazing tips for us on our show. So we're going to make some changes um, based on the feedback that he gave us. And we will talk about all of that the last Thursday of this month. Yep. Great. So should we get into this week's topic? Let's do it. Kind of talking about your marriage and the involvement of parents. Right, so how do we kick this off, babe? <clears throat> well, let's start with, in Genesis, uh, we, we see some marriage topics happening in Genesis. That's right. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, in there it talks about the idea of leaving and cleaving. Right. So that you should... Husbands should leave your father and mother and be joined to your wife. That's right. So after uh, God creates the earth, um, he creates man. As you probably know, man's name was Adam. God also created for him a wife, and her name was Eve. And right after he created that, he created the first human institution ever to be created. And that institution was... <coughs> marriage. Marriage. And the, the, the verse actually says, For this reason... A man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife. Yeah, just right. depending on your version. Yeah, right, Be right. But but it actually it actually the the root word actually implies not like joining like like holding hands like this. Right. But actually becoming, becoming one, person. one person. Right. Like we've talked about before, I think like a piece of paper. You know, you can't make it into two pieces of paper. Right, a single but piece, yeah. It's, right, it's one piece. piece. Right. 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 Exactly right. So this, there's this idea in Genesis that's leave and cleave, that we should be leaving our families, leaving our our 
in not obviously we shouldn't like ignore them anymore but but they are not our priority anymore they are not where we're being where we're being discipled anymore that's not the place that we are loyal our ultimate loyalty here on earth lies but we leave our families and then we're joined we're cleaving to our spouse and so in that um I think you used the term cut the apron strings. Yeah. Right? So tell me when we were talking, tell me what you mean, cut the apron strings. So this is based on an old saying that I'm sure all sorts of people would tell me about how sexist that statement is, I suppose, now looking back. But <clears throat> it's, you know, an old statement that was meant for particularly men, but not always men, who were still tied to they mama um, after they got married. Right? I mean, boys have, and you know this, you have boys. Boys have a special relationship with their moms. Um, and when we look at children, what we realize psychologically is <clears throat> boy babies take their sense of identity from their dads and their sense of security from their moms. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's why having absentee fathers is so devastating for young men. Because they basically grow up with tons of security and zero identity. Yeah. The little girls are the opposite. Little girls grow up getting their sense of identity from their mother and their sense of security from their father. So when we talk about daddy issues with regards to women, what are we talking about? Security. Women that are insecure, right? <clears throat> and so you can see when you remove one of those, what a disaster it can be. But the other can be true as well. <clears throat> when you remove the child who's now 20 and, or 25 or 30 and is getting married, meaning that child needs to be child, child, needs to be moved from their parents and hook on to their now wife or, or husband, you have can have guys and girls that just don't, they don't want to let go right. of the security that they feel from their mom. Right. Um, and, and not just, the, I mean, the, the, the cutting the apron strings, you asked about the background. That's the background of it. But certainly the, we see this with regards to fathers sure. as well. Um, but the point is, you can't be married to your wife and married to your mom. Yeah. <laughs> That's <clears throat> awkward. Right. Yeah. I mean, I've known some relationships that have really struggled because they're, the husband and wife are married, but... The husband is way too attached to mom right. still, or the wife is way too attached to dad. And then that marriage has a third person that it was never supposed to have. And, and the spouse feels like cheated out of the marriage that they, that they thought they were entering into because that's, right. they're not married to just one person. They're married to two. Right. Yeah, I mean, it immediately throws out that sense of security that we all desire in our marriage because you feel all of a sudden threatened, really, mm -hmm. um, by, and even if it's just for time, right, by this other individual, and that individual is your in-law, mm -hmm. right? So it's like, it's hard to talk about it. Um, and you know, that, that can be just super devastating on the security that either spouse right. feels in a marriage. Sorry. So what I was going to say is for people who are newly married, it may be best to maybe err more on the side of the leaving part for a while until you start really getting your bearings about you in your marriage. So maybe that means you're telling your parents, Hey mom and dad, we we're gonna have dinner with you once a week, but but for now that needs to be our boundary, you know, <clears throat> because I want to make sure that I'm not bringing you along with me in my marriage. Mm. I want to be sure that I have the boundaries at first until I know that we're you know my husband and I are solid, and I I am I have joined with him, and that having extra relationships with my family isn't going to hurt my marriage. Right. Right. So how can you know if this is a problem? Usually you know because your spouse will tell you. <laughs> yeah. Or your spouse has some 
some bitterness, resentment, anger towards his his or her in-laws. Right. Yeah, I'd even go a step further and say, I would encourage you, if you're married and you're watching this, pause the video right now and go ask your spouse, do you feel like I am overly attached to my mom and dad? And if right now you're feeling like I don't want to do that, you probably have a problem mm -hmm. with cutting the apron strings because what that tells me is you don't want to go ask because you're afraid you know what the answer mm -hmm. is. Um, and <clears throat> here's the deal, y'all. Even if you feel like, hey, my relationship with my parents is totally appropriate. She's just super sensitive to that. You married her or him. Mm -hmm. So if they're really sensitive to that, it's your responsibility as the individual who has left mom and dad and cleaved to her or him to honor them in that sensitivity and take steps to be able to pursue them in that. Right. That's part of what you did right. when you made a covenant with the Lord for their benefit, even if you think they're crazy about it. Yep. Um, that's it's that's is what it is, right? I mean, you know, you, you, you married them, and it's important to pursue them in that area. Yeah. So another way that parents can can really affect our relationships, mm -hmm. right? How to keep the relationship with parents proper when we get married is the disagreements, mm. right? Yeah. So how, so how do you mean? Uh, I mean, you've got to fight fair, and that means that your your issue is with your spouse, and you don't get to bring along uh, enforcers. <laughs> Yeah. So if I'm having a disagreement with Nathan and I go to my mom and I tell her all about it and expect her to get involved, that is so wrong so on wrong. so many levels because yep. number one, I'm tainting her view of Nathan then. Yep. So that's not fair to Nathan to then taint my mom's view of him by telling her the arguments that we're having yep. and the things that he's doing wrong. And of course, inevitably I'm giving my side, which is, a much more rosy side than than the actual real truth of what's going on. So that's not fair to take my parents' view or my family's view of my husband by airing our dirty laundry in front of them, right? Yep. It's also not fair to ask or expect them to get involved because they have they're biased. They're my family. So of course they're probably going to see things from my side more than they are from Nathan's side. Yep. And and my this is my marriage, not theirs. Yep. So to get them involved is not fair to anybody and it's also it's also not helping you to work on your issues in your marriage. As far as like um you need to learn how to disagree well in your marriage. How to have conflict well and yep. how to arrive at an understanding or how to arrive at a compromise or whatever that kind of thing is like how to do that yep. well in marriage. If you're constantly running to your parents, you're not going to get there yep. and you're probably going to have more fights. That isn't to say that it's not appropriate to sometimes bring in a mentor couple that's not family or something like that or a pastor yeah. when you're really struggling and you can't, fight, figure out how to fight fair, or you can't come to an agreement or whatever. That's great to involve people who are not your family, that you're not trying to get on sides. You're just trying to get their help to come to understanding with each other yeah. and, or to fight well with each other, productively right. with each other. Right. That's okay. But really in the end, you need to learn that for the majority of the time, how to do it between the two of you. Yeah, that's right. It's an important skill. Right. It reminds me, it's, this is a crossover between cutting the apron strings and, and this fighting fair because as you were talking, I thought, you know, one of the main ways that I see women who've not cut the apron string is women who say, yeah, but you know, my mom is really my best friend. Like mm -hmm. she's the one I hang out with on the weekends. She's the one I go do stuff with. She's mm -hmm. my friend. Um, and so we talk about these things because she's my best friend. I, and I would say, 
and you baby you can tell me if I'm out of line yeah. here, but I would say find other friends. I mean, there's nothing wrong with having your mom as a friend. In fact, that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Find other friends. And then, then as a side note to that, don't beat your husband up to any of your friends. That's whether it's your I spouse say. or not. Or yeah. your mom or not. So my mom is is one of my closest friends. She's a great friend to me and we're very close. I I certainly don't ever talk to her about the intimate details of her arguments. I we we do sometimes talk about things that um we've disagreed about, but it's pretty eagle's eye view, 10,000 sure. foot view. I'm I don't bash Nathan. I don't talk about, you know, those kinds of things with, with my mom. And mostly that's, that's because of God's grace, because I don't think those things very often about Nathan. I do sometimes, but I don't, even in, even in disagreements, I don't think about those things like Nathan bashing in my head and that's God's grace. Totally. So I don't even have those things to say very often, <laughs> but, but yes, my mom and I talk a lot and we talk, we talk about a lot of different things, but we talk very little about things that we disagree on or issues that we're having in our marriage. And when we do, it's pretty surface level just because she wants that boundary. I want that boundary. Mm. And even though they know everything that we've been through in the past, there still needs to be that boundary of like, they're not my, um, what are the, they're not the referee. Right. And they don't want to be the referee. In fact, when we got married, they were very clear that like, don't, don't think that you're going to run away from your husband by coming to us. You need to stay with your husband and figure things out. Um, don't ever run back home. If you're having a fight, we are not here for you for that. So, so yeah, I, I mean, my mom is a great friend, a very close friend of mine, but we don't talk about details of disagreements between her and my dad or Nathan and me. Yeah. And yes, to my friends, there have been times that in the last eight years that I've gone to a friend and said, a very close friend, like very close. And said, I am struggling with this with Nathan, but it's in order to try to get help for that or, or prayer or whatever. I'm not saying, oh, Nathan, this, 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 and this right. is why he stinks and blah, blah, blah. I'm right. saying, here's our problem. Here's my side and his side. And we're really struggling. And in most cases, those people were mentors of yours. Right. right? I mean, that doesn't mean they're not, they're not friends, right? But that's a specific subset a friend really you know somebody that you trust to give you guidance in your life on difficult times right. um so while certainly our mentors are friends all of our friends are not mentors yeah right yeah cool um I, 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 a note on this as well and andrea you said it about your parents i've always appreciated them uh, this about them and my parents have said the same thing too parent if you're watching this and you are a parent of adult children, do not allow them to come tell you about the things that are going on. Tell them to knock it off. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I know you, your situation. I know your situations. Unlike any situation <laughs> ever, and I would never understand. I do understand. It's wrong. Don't do it. Mm -hmm. um, there, there's no greater gift you can give your child than telling them to go home and figure it out. Yeah. Right? Again, barring a situation of physical abuse, which I always carve that out because, you know, if, if there's physical abuse going on, one, you need to get the victim separated into a safe place and the kids, if that's an issue, and you need to get the police Right, abuse is definitely a different issue. But any other event, you need to tell them you need to go home and figure it yep. out. Um, because they cannot be reliant on you. In the same way, if you're an adult and perhaps you're in a blended family, from a blended family, and maybe, or maybe not, and your mom and or dad likes to come to you with problems in their marriage, you yeah, be the adult too, yeah. and tell them to knock it off. Right. Um, tell them, look, I love 
you both too much to allow you to go talking about this behind their back. Um, you, I look up to you as my parent. I need you to go in there and be the adult and figure it out. Um, but don't, don't allow them. I mean, you can give each other gifts back and forth in that way by just forcing people to confront yeah. the issues. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a good point. We have heard of people who their parents their parents pull them into their marital issues. Yeah, surprising number. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So right. fight fair. That's right. Uh, number three kind of thing we wanted to talk about here is um, prefer your spouse. Yes. So this is a big one. Um, it is, you know, really easy to prefer your parents. Yeah, it's, right? I mean, to, you've been with them for however many years leading up to being married, right? right? They're they're your parents. Right. They gave you life and raised you and all right. that. Yeah, so as I kind of think about this, I kind of think of it as a cut the ape strings light issue, <laughs> right? Where it's like, okay, I'm not reliant on my mom's affirmation. I, you know, I'm relying on your affirmation. But, you know, her fried chicken is just better than yours. <laughs> my mother-in-law's fried chicken is definitely better than mine. <laughs> right, but I, mean, but I wouldn't, but I wouldn't <laughs> until, until we had as deep of our relationship as we have now after almost 15 years, I wouldn't say that. No, but I mean, can. it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's one of me. those, it's one of the, and, and as a note, I can really only say that because you said it first. I mean, you, you know, it's, it's, it's True. those little yeah, things, it's right? It's, it's the, yeah, it's our relationship, but I really prefer things the way that they used to be. See, it's not the, it's, it's the insidious nature of like, yeah, I'm I'm married to you, and it's yeah, it's it's all right, but I but I kind of miss the way it was before yeah. you. Right, right. That's super dangerous in in a marriage. It is, and even even just taking your spouse's side, even when you maybe don't want to take your spouse's side yep. with your parents or your in laws or whatever, yep. but really making sure that it's known. I prefer my spouse. Right. And I'm going to take their side. Right. Um, speaks volumes to family totally. because yeah. then, then um, they just know where you're going to land on that. So, you know, they're not trying to come in on the side and get you to make a different decision or talk in your ear about something. You know, they know. Not nah, Andrea just always prefers, always sides with Nathan. Yep. Nathan, Andrea just always sides with Nathan. If yep. Nathan says, nope, we're not going to do that this year, Andrea isn't like swayed to try to convince him to do differently. That's just where she's leaning to. Yep. Yeah, there's a couple ways you can really sell into this in your relationship. Number one is don't have side conversations going on with your parents. If, if, if what you're. Do you mean by that? So I know there's a lot of like, hey, I, I go over to my mom's house to pick something up. And she's like, hey, I, I noticed when I was over at you guys' house, it seems like Andrea hasn't gotten the chance to pick up the house. Oh, lately. oh, those kinds of, I was going to say, I have a lot of conversations with my parents yeah. about you around. No, no, no. But, and, and, and even, you know, with, with good parents that we have, those things happen sometimes. But then what happens right as soon as I get home? Oh, yeah. You're brought sure. in on the conversation. As opposed to like... You just, I sort of have this side conversation going on with my mom, and I know it hurt your feelings, so I'm just not really bringing you in on it, right? So yeah, thankfully our parents don't do that. Right. No, 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 they don't. Yeah, they don't, but I know a lot of parents yes. that do. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, when you, my point in this is when you, th when we're then all together and you have the freedom to say, hey, mom-in-law. Uh, I heard you mention something about me not being able to clean up the house. What's the message it sends to mom-in-law? We talk. We talk. So when you say something, you better know it's getting back to the other person because they prefer unity in that relationship more than unity in this relationship. Right? It's the same way with gossip. You want to kill gossip in your church or in your community group or whatever, every time you hear it, go tell the other person. <laughs> Right, that'll kill it real oh, quick. Man. Oh man! Because pretty soon people go, "Well, I'm not gonna. I don't want to gossip because I'm because I'm just gonna get found out." And you know, then especially if you follow that up with, "Hey, mom and law, mom, if you think we have an issue with how we clean the house, 
why don't Andrew and can I we, come over and we'll talk about can it? Can we talk about it together? Right? And then yeah. what's probably going to happen is they're going to go, oh, yeah, we'll all call my people, call your people, we'll set that up. <laughs> right? Because it's not important, right? It's, it's a way of being manipulative. And, you know, look, by the nature of this, this week and next week, there we are dealing with some, unfortunately, some of the more seedy situations in parenting um, and in in-laws. So, you know, you may be listening to this going, man, you guys have met the worst in-laws no, and parents. And, and, and we have great parents and, and I have great in-laws. But as we've mentioned before, we've, we've had the opportunity, we've had the opportunity to mentor a ton yeah. of married couples. And this is real. And it's, and I don't believe that a lot of these that we've come in, that we've mentored that their parents mean to do this sort of thing. No, they don't. They just do, you know, yeah. and they don't mean to put a wedge between the husband and wife. They don't mean to all of that. It's just a lack of maybe a lack of knowing. I don't know. Yeah. And I think it can be some operating out of particularly if you're the oldest, particularly the oldest boy. I think you have to perhaps be a little more frank with your mom than maybe younger mm -hmm. boys have to be. Because I think it can be a natural difficulty for a mom who this has been their baby for 20 whatever number of years yeah it could be and now there's going to be another woman that's the main woman in their life you know i'd imagine that could, could be. be a difficult right. thing to deal with and it can be easier to fall into some of these you know traps of criticism and those yeah. kinds of things that you want to show you know, all these, all of us as men need to show our moms, no, we, we're, that within this relationship, I prefer her mm -hmm. over you. It doesn't mean I don't love you. It just means Absolutely. she's my main thing. Right. Um, and that's how it's going to be. Absolutely. So I felt like I had to sneeze. Any moment now. But I think it's gone. So, right. so the other one I was just going to mention in that, I said I had two. The other one is um, in your routines. So I've met, we have met several couples where, some of their biggest hangups are that they won't move out of preferring their old parents or family routine, mm. right? So, um, hey, you know, we, every morning when I wake up, we would watch cartoons for an hour. And so, you know, you have kids and it's like, well, every morning we're watching cartoons for an hour. And your spouse is like, I don't think that's right for our kids to be watching that much TV. And rather than any discussion, it's just... No, I, that's how I did it. We're doing right. it that way. Right. Um, and and that can be really hard. Can be really hard. Yeah. Um, and I think the only way you combat that is by sitting down as a couple and being real with oh, each yeah, other. Yeah, when about, those things come up. Yeah. You know, man, I, I, I thought it was amazing when we woke up every morning and watched cartoons for an hour. But also being able to understand, you know what, I've got a new thing going on here. Yeah. It's not my f growing up years. Um, and maybe there's a compromise right. to be had there. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, we've had we've had some things that we've stumbled over in the past with routines. You know, what was normal yeah. for me growing up was not normal for you. And sure, I, I thought I I probably didn't even give it a second thought on some of those sorts of things. Yeah, so I, we can share one um, briefly. It's kind, of, it's kind of it's kind of a fun one, um, but you know, we grew up. Andrea and I, with very different parental involvement with regards to Santa Claus. And what's brought this, you know, what's this whole topic, we're kind of talking about it because we're moving into November holidays. and December, the holiday times. And we had very different yeah, growing ups about, about, about Santa. No, no, we have. And we don't need to rehash the whole thing again. But the point is... My parents were right and his were wrong. The, right. Um, that's <laughs> that was the really point. much... So, like, for example, <laughs> like, when we're talking about preferring... <laughs> things the way they were that's a really good example andrea thanks for <laughs> thanks for just showing us an example of what not to do here on marriage monday okay my parents we grew up there's no santa claus but never believed in it and that was the right way and his parents grew up with yeah we pretend like there's a santa claus until you figure it out and right. now we have with our kids i have to do that <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that is not accurate 
So we did. We compromised. I mean, you know, we can get in more into this. Maybe we'll do a whole special thing yeah, we did. In, God, in December we did um, to talk about how we compromised in that area because I know that's a, a, a thing, particularly in the Christian community. But um, but yeah, we had to compromise in that area. And now it's such a fun joke between the two of us. So. Right. There you go. Yeah. Okay, so... Right now, people are thinking, didn't sound like a joke. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. So, and it's a joke with his, his family and my family. Right. Okay, so our last one is, um, as a spouse, or get your get your spouse out of your parents' shadow. Right. So what's this look like, babe? Oh, so this might look like my dad fixed everything. We didn't ever have to have any contractors come in. Unless it was plumbing, because that's nasty. Um, we this is a very specific example. Is I this know. from, like, perhaps your real life? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> we didn't ever have to have anybody come, come in, because my dad fixed everything. So, And now your husband. My husband does not fix anything. Not, not you're a friend of yours. No. Has it? By a, friend of, a friend of mine named Andrea Warnock. <laughs> um, yeah. So I am married to a guy who didn't grow up with a dad that fixed everything and taught him and all that sort of thing, you know? So, um, he, he just isn't a fixer and he can do small little things, but it's just not something that like is innate for him. You know, yeah. <clears throat> some people it is and some people it isn't. And for him it isn't. And, and now I've come to a point that I'm like, I don't know, who cares? Like not a big deal. But for a long time, it really frustrated me about him that he, that we have to pay somebody to fix all the things that go wrong in a house because he doesn't know. And I always, he, I was like always overshadowing his abilities or who he was as a husband by my dad, mm. because my dad was a great guy and he did a lot of things. I mean, he's, he, when I was growing up, I'm talking about was, cause I'm talking about growing up. He did a lot of things really well, and he provided really well, and fixed things really well, and um, so there are a lot. There are several things where Nathan's role as a husband, I was overshadowing that by what what I thought of as a husband because of my dad, and and one of those was fixing things. Yeah. So um, that created some friction with us for years because yeah. I, I got frustrated with him and he was frustrated that it, like it's not that big of a deal and it's just not who he is. Yeah. And it really can create a wedge between your spouse and that particular in-law. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, you know, praise the Lord. It didn't with your dad and I, but it also, it, you know, it does create a situation where, you know, he's a huge resource for me when there are things that I want to try and figure out mm -hmm. um, to grow in this area and when I feel like I'm validating something you already believe mm. about him and me, it makes me not want to call him, mm. right? Because it's like, well, I don't want to. I'd rather call someone and have them come out and professionally fix it than call and have him to the rescue again. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, and, and just thinking about those things. Take the time to think about those things. Some of them may be obvious like that. Some of them may be totally not obvious but that still are overshadowing. So like going back to my dad, he's such a steady guy, like so steady. And one of the examples of that is he came home from work at the same time every night. And for a while it really bugged me that Nathan doesn't. He, sometimes it's super late and sometimes it's more normal. And you know, and I, and I was really bugged by that for a long time. And then finally realized like, it's okay. That, that was my, the way my dad did it, which was great. And I loved that growing up because it was so consistent and so reliable, but that's not who Nathan is. And it doesn't have to be who Nathan is either. Mm. Yeah, it's good. So, so some, what are some big ones that we see with, with couples? Maybe we'll just maybe go back and forth for another couple as we think about it. Um, one that I see a lot of from people that grew up in Christian homes is Mm. my, and it's, it's generally the husband that's getting banged here. Um, my husband doesn't study the Bible like my dad did. Mm. Right? My dad had these, you know, quiet times and you know, his 
prayer life and he journaled and my husband doesn't do any of that. Right. So the spiritual, which is super dangerous, um, but the spiritual overshadowing, Mm -hmm. see this. I feel like you and I have seen this a few times too with um, women who grew up, either their dad was or or the individual they grew up with was a pastor. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, that can be particularly hard for a husband who's not called to be a pastor Who's not, you know, is being paid to study, sure. you know, to, to have time to do all of that Bible study. They're working sure. outside the, the church and doing all that stuff. Right. So that's one that I see. Oh, gosh. Um, one that I've seen is just... <coughs> Excuse me. Um, probably traditional expectations of the wife. Mm. And... Well, my mom made dinner for us every night, and my mom cleaned and the house. And was always ready at this time. Right. My mom cleaned the house. She kept it clean, and my mom packed our lunches, and, mm-hmm. you know, having that odor. And my mom stayed home, and all that sort of, sort of thing. Having that overshadow your wife of, well, she did all the home stuff, so that's what you should do, too. That's right. Sort of thing. Those are great. Those are, yeah, that's a great example, babe. That's great. Yeah, I mean, you guys may be able to think of others, too, where you can easily fall into, you know, allowing your parents and what you knew growing up to overshadow your spouse, and it's really damaging Mm -hmm. um, to do that. So you may be in a position where you have recognized, hey, I need to cut the apron strings with my, my parents. I need to stop holding my wife to the standard of my parents and having her drowning in their shadow or him drowning in their shadow. You know, what I would say to you is ad- admit that to your spouse, right? Go to them and say, Hey, I realize now that I'm doing this and I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. You may have a blind spot in this area. I would encourage you go to your spouse and watch this together with them or, you know, go with those four different areas and ask them, Hey, can we talk about these? Are there any of these that I have hurt you in? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and then stop, right? Recognize those things and stop. Yeah. Um, and parents out there of adult children, be wary of these things, right? Encourage your kids, as even at the young age as they get older, begin to prepare them. You're not always going to be under my authority, and I want to prepare you for that. Mm-hmm. Um, to begin to push them out into the world, Definitely. even before they leave your home. Yeah. Awesome. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate you being here. We always love getting together with you on Mondays for Marriage Monday. We will have more coming up next week. Until then, we've got a whole week's worth of shows to go through the rest of this week. Can't wait to see you next week. Remember, God is for your marriage. Hey, thanks for joining us on Marriage by Design. If you were impacted by this video, like it by hitting the thumbs up below. Also, don't forget to subscribe. And once you subscribe, hit the bell icon so you can be notified when new episodes release. Excellent. Also, one of the huge pillars of our show is interactivity between us and you. So we would love you to comment down in the comments below if you have thoughts about this video or if you have questions or other things you'd like to, like to see considered in the future. In addition, if you'd like, you can email us. That's marriagebydesignpodcast at gmail.com. We're also on Instagram at marriagebydesignpodcast, or you can find us on Facebook by searching Marriage by Design Podcast. Finally, if you want to, you can tweet at us. We do have a Twitter account. That is at marriagexdesign. Thanks, and have a great day.